This is a hot rod. And so are these, all of them, waiting their turn to participate in official time trials at El Mirage Dry Lakes in California. Every kind of car and every type of motor appears here, representing many man hours and hard-earned dollars. A great share of the latest improvements in modern high compression automobiles were developed right here on this hot rod strip. These men are officials of the Southern California Timing Association. They are pioneers in the field of hot rod racing. They have helped to overcome a public distaste for the words hot rod and have served as an example to their younger members who are made to realize that their cars should be built for safety as well as speed. Each car has been inspected before it embarks on its time trial. The desire for perfection has created a sport that is educational as well as exciting to both participants and spectators. This is legal hot rod racing. There is no speed limit here. The idea is to go as fast as you can against a common opponent, the clock. This was once a hot rod also. The same amount of work and thought and mechanical ingenuity went into the making of this hot rod as goes into those that race against the clock. Mechanically, they're the same, but there the resemblance ends. This hot rod was a murderer. It killed two people. It might have started with something like this. Very possibly it did. This is illegal hot rod racing. It kills a lot of young mechanical geniuses every year. Just showing off. What a grandstander. He is not. He sure is. He's gonna wind up in little pieces if he keeps taking chances like that. Playing him. You're just jealous, that's all. Your home on my bike. Are you kidding? I'll bet people we can lose them. Maybe they'll catch him. Serve him right. No, they can't catch him all. Jack will get away. He's just lucky. Drives pretty good, too. My pal. you two. Who were they? Thanks. Say, do you think your dad would approve of this? Of what? Riding my bike? Maybe there's a new law against that, too. I wouldn't be surprised. Now you can't blame the cops, Swifty. You know how everybody feels about hot rods. You mean how your pop feels about them? Listen, Dave. Come on, I let's go.
Well, see you tomorrow, Dave, huh? Yeah, and don't forget to wear a clean shirt. We'll go right from school. A clean shirt? Why tomorrow it's so formal all of a sudden? What's the matter with you anyway? We've had an appointment at the newspaper office for a week. The morning messenger. Aw, oh, Dave, you're not really serious about getting a job, are you? Oh, listen, Swifty, we've talked this all over before, and we both decided we could use a little extra money, remember? Yeah, I remember that part of it, but, well, I don't think I like the newspaper business. You know, the trouble with you is you don't have any ambition. How do you ever expect to get anywhere? Well, sure, I got ambition, and I'd like to make money just like anybody else. It's just that, well, there must be an easier way. You mean you'd like to make money without working for it, huh? Yeah, that's right. And when you figure it out, let me know. I'll do that, Dave. In the meantime, we're going to work for the newspaper. See you tomorrow. Okay. So long, Mr. Legree. So long. And don't forget the white shirt. All right, all right, all right. of these two defendants, the court holds you morally responsible for their actions. You are very fortunate not to be facing manslaughter charges, but they will someday if you allow them to race around this town in those overpowered automobiles. Perhaps you don't realize that 25% of the cases tried in this court involve hot rods. Maybe you didn't know that in the past six months, over 50 people lost their lives as a direct result of hot rod accidents. And who's to blame? You are. Inasmuch as these defendants are first offenders, the court will not impose a jail sentence. And the court will do its utmost to see that they do not become second offenders. Their automobile operator's licenses are hereby revoked for the period of one year. Your Honor, I'm a widow. My son helps to support me. He makes deliveries for the market and that. You should have thought of that before you allowed him to rebuild the car's motor. Now, the court realizes that at times it's more difficult than it seems to supervise the activities of teenagers. Being a parent myself, I, I'm familiar with your problem. But it must be done. And it will be done as long as I sit on this bench. Your son, madam, will simply have to make his deliveries in a different manner. I would suggest a bicycle. If the orders of this court are not carried out, the full prison terms allowed by law will be imposed. You may go now, but you parents may well be grateful that the day you attended a trial instead of a funeral. Court adjourned. Hello, Bill. Oh, hi, Dan. Hello, Joe. How did it go today? Not so good. As usual, too many cases were hot rod drivers. You should have been with me. I didn't see one hot rod all day long. If I never see or hear of one of those things again, I'll be a very happy man. Everyone's in such a hurry, they can't take their kids to school. They have to buy them a car so they can kill each other. Wait a minute, Dad. You, you can't tell me you don't believe in automobiles. Automobiles, yes. Hot rods, no. If people only realized, I'm trying to help them. I'm trying to save their children's lives. David. Oh, hi, Dad. Hi, Joe. Freedom of the press is a wonderful thing. Hmm. Well, come to think of it, I've never heard of anyone being killed by a magazine. What's new, son? Oh, not much, Your Honor. Oh, yes, there is, too. I've got a job. With your permission, of course. Oh, what kind of a job? I've decided to go into the newspaper business. Splendid. Very noble profession. Well, I, uh, I may need a little capital to start with. Mm. Well, I'm perfectly willing to pay the prevailing rates of interest, of course. How much? Oh, 50 to 75 bucks. What? Oh, I see you're thinking of buying a newspaper. Well, that's not a bad figure at that. Oh, huh? no, Dad, it's a newspaper route, the morning messenger. Oh. Dinner's ready, Judge. Mm, thank you, Martha. Well, this investment of yours interests me. You have to buy the newspaper, is that it? Oh, no, I have to buy a car. Well, corn on the cob, what do you know? 
besides, it's got good brakes and a whole set of retreads, too. And it's not a hot rod. Believe me, I've seen it. But go over 35, it's a miracle. How about coming over to look at it tonight, Dad? Got to be open-minded about these things, you know. Open-minded, he says. You two haven't allowed me to get in a word for half an hour. Where is this automotive masterpiece that you speak of? Got a used car lot on Western. Would you come down and see it tonight, Dad? All right, all right, but let me finish my dessert in peace, will you? Say, Dave, is that Hot Rod magazine tied in with the association? No, but there's a lot of good stuff in it, though. They only deal with legal hot rod racing. Yeah, I know about that. Practically every good-sized city in the West has one of those straightaway strips nearby. Yeah, be a swell thing for this city, don't you think? I mean, keep those hot rods in off the street. Yeah, it would. Listen, if you two ham actors are leading up to what I think you are, the answer is no. Now, you know how I feel about this, and if you think for a moment... I'm, I'm not asking for a hot rod, Dad. It's just that, well, I agree with you about racing in the streets. I, I think it's dangerous, too. But where else are the kids going to race? Now, if they had a... That I can answer very simply. They are not going to race, and that's that. But, Dad, racing against the clock's been approved by every police department I know of. You ought to give it some thought. Yeah, and with you behind a movement like this, it couldn't miss. And I know just the spot for a strip. Well, boys, if I thought for a moment I could trust these hot rod drivers to race only on a strip, but that's out of the question. Now, my methods may be a little harsh, but at least they work. Well, I don't think they do entirely, Dad. You know, the quickest way to get these kids to do something is to tell them not to do it. Now, with a legal strip and official timers, you wouldn't... Joe, I don't care to discuss it anymore. Open mind, open mind. Now you be open... quiet, too, and finish your dinner. I'll give it some thought, but I don't want to discuss it anymore tonight. Let's uh, go out and look at that so-called automobile of yours, huh? the ground, isn't it? Well, it's got wheels. Four of them. All right, all right. Get in if you want to lift. Will you, Swifty? This is just transportation, that's all. It's not supposed to be a hot ride. No? This comes as a great shock to me. Even though it might sound a little unusual coming from me, I, I wish you'd think about it. According to this magazine, Hot Rod, and to my two sons, incidentally, quite a few fair-sized cities have official timing strips for hot rods, either in it or nearby. And the statistics, if true, show that there are fewer hot rod accidents as a result. Now, my methods regarding our traffic problems and miners involved in them have been quite drastic, but they don't always work. Maybe this will. That's why I've asked you together to consider this proposal of a timing strip for our city. Now, if you can agree that it's a good idea, and if you can convince me that it... It's open.
No, I'm taking you home. I, I got a lot of work to do. Maybe you better get out this side. All right, David. It's really a very nice car. No, it isn't. But it will be. Swifty and I are going to fix it up so it looks a lot better. We'll get some seat covers and some paint. We're going to give this old heap a real facelifting. At least it'll look like an automobile. That sounds fine, David. Then how about my driving you home from school tomorrow, huh, Janie? Oh, I can't. I I'm busy. Oh, well. Maybe Friday then, huh? I'm, I'm really awfully sorry, David, but uh, I can't Friday either. Jack Bridget again? Yeah, I thought so. Maybe next week. Maybe. Goodbye, David. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You, why the long face? Mm, nothing, Swifty. Forget it. What do you mean, nothing? Come on, you can tell me. I'm in a sympathetic mood. Forget it, will you? No, I won't forget it. Come on, you can certainly tell your old pal Swifty, can't you? Well, if you must know, I got stuck with the right girl in the wrong car. When? This afternoon, coming home from school. Oh, so Jackie boy finally caught up with you, huh? Caught up with me? Passed me like I was standing still. Oh, so that's it. Well, into each life, a little rain must fall. Get in, sunshine. Where are we going? To your dad's junkyard. Please, you better not let him hear you say that. It's an auto wrecking lot, not a junkyard. <laughs> if my dad will give you very much for this thing. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if he refused to buy it at all. I'm not selling it. Oh. Well, then why are Your we... Your dad sells parts, doesn't he? Oh, yeah, sure, but... Hey, you mean we're really going to make a hot rod out of this coffee grinder? This coffee grinder, my friend, is going to be the hottest job in six counties when we get through with it. Hallelujah! <laughs> oh, but what about your pop? Boy, when he finds out about this, he'll go right through the top of the courthouse ceiling. He's not going to find out about it. We'll work on it in your garage, OK? Sure. Where'd you get this? Remember that hot rod that cracked up a couple of weeks ago down on the parkway? Yeah. Well, this is all that was left of it. It's neat, huh? That's a good thing we're not superstitious. Boy, that's for sure. Hey, you know where your transmission came from? Remember last winter during that terrible never rainy mind, spell? Never mind, never mind. Oh, 
Oh, yeah. Uh, before I forget, here. Oh, wait a minute. You're carrying a good thing too far. What wreck did this come off of? Ah, oh, Dave, you know I wouldn't do a thing like that to you. It's new. I bought it for you. It's, well, it's sort of a present, that's all. A present? Yeah, a good luck present. Well, gee, thanks, Swifty. Thanks a lot. And for everything else, too. <laughs> hey, you're not going to leave that old head on it, are you? That's the only one I got. Well, guess I better go look for a nice aluminum head. Yeah, it's bound to be better than the one you got. Very funny, very funny. And clever, too. <laughs> Get out of here. Well, that's it, Swifty. Fire it up. This is gonna be a bomb. All set? Contact. Well, come on, come on. Well, fire it up, will you? What do you want me to use, a match? Hold it, hold it. Hey, Dave. She's in the start. No kidding. Maybe it needs gas. All right, try it now. Hold it, hold it. Well, I can't figure it out. Well, Dave, maybe you haven't got the wires just right. Why, you knothead, give me that. Oh, is that what you need? Why didn't you say so? All you have to do is ask. Try it again. No, wait a minute. Now, don't get your fingers caught in the fan. Ready? OK, contact. Oh, I forgot the switch. Well, try putting it up. We got it now. Ooh, we almost had it. Try it again. Where you been all week? Oh, busy. S say, I was just thinking, maybe you'd like a ride home. Oh, thanks, David, but, well, I already promised... Here I am, Dreamboat. Well, if it isn't David Langham, boy daredevil. Gotten any speeding tickets lately? Gosh, I didn't think I'd ever get through that exam this morning. Say, Gloria. Hi, David. Would you like to go for a ride? Well, this is a pleasant surprise. The pleasure is mine, believe me. Thanks, Jack. I... Boy, will you look at the speed game. Come on, Jane, let's have some fun with him. All right, let's. Can you imagine that guy still taking people for rides in that pile of tent he has? Listen, we'll just wait till he gets out on the highway and we'll happen to pass him, huh?
King. Did you pass me? Take your foot off the brake. Hi, cop. How goes it? Okay. Your jalopy sounds pretty good. Oh, it's okay. Runs anyhow. No, I don't doubt that it does. You've been doing some work on it, haven't you? Well, put in a new muffler and tuned it up a bit is all. Kid, listen, you might be able to put one over on Dad, but you can't do it with me. I know the sound of a high compression engine when I hear it, and I heard it. So you heard it. Look, kid, I, I just don't want you to get in any trouble. Take it easy, that's all. If his honor ever found out oh, about yeah, it. I know, I know. But listen, Joe, you know that Janie Evans and I have been going around together ever since we were in grammar school. All that time, the only trouble I've ever had has been with Jack Blodgett. On the track team, he was always trying to show me up, and sometimes he did. When we played football, well, you remember what a grandstander he was. It was the same with everything else. No matter what he did, he was always trying to beat my time with Janie. Now he gets himself a hot rod, so... So you have to get a hot rod, too, is that it? Just so Jack can't take Janie away from you, huh? Well, yeah, but th that wasn't the only reason. Everybody I else is... I kid. I'm not so much older than you, I can't remember how it was. But do like I said, huh? Take it easy in that thing. You know, if we're ever gonna get Dad around our way of thinking, you've gotta stay out of trouble. Well, don't worry, I will. And... thanks, cop. Okay, delinquent. <laughs> That's nice of you to say, Janie. I, I did it for you, you know. <laughs> yeah, I guess he was pretty mad, all right. Oh, I don't know. I guess I could get it up to uh, maybe 80 at least. Oh, that's not so much. No. Yeah, I guess it is getting pretty late, all right. Oh, I almost forgot. How about... Well, I mean, uh, you don't have a date for that beach party tomorrow, have you? Swell, I'll pick you up then, huh? Okay, Janie, about a quarter to 12? Okay. Bye. Hurry up, hurry up. All right, all right. Oh, what an hour for a man to get up on a Saturday morning. I haven't even had breakfast yet. When do we eat? Come on, we got collections today, and I got a date at a quarter to 12. Congratulations.
be late enough to start collecting now. Everybody ought to be awake, even you. I am, but I'm still hungry. I don't think I'm gonna like this part of the newspaper business. Oh, sure you will. Remember, this is where the profit comes in. Don't take no for an answer. <laughs> Comedian. You take that entrance, I'll take this. Okay. Well, there it is. That thing? You mean he beat you in that? Yeah, and don't kid yourself. That thing has a lot of motor in it. Hey. You want to have a little fun? Sure, what's the scoop? Listen, Dave's got a date with Janie for the beach party. So we'll just borrow his car, run it up a few blocks and park it. Then I'll show up at Janie's on time, and I'll take it to the beach party. I don't know, suppose he sees us. Oh, he won't see us. And it's not like we're stealing his car or anything, it's just a gag. Well, oh, come on, you take over the wheel. Okay, only suppose the key ain't in it. It will be, probably. He turned out to be. Just because he's got a date this afternoon, he has to go and... Hey, Dave! Hey, Dave! Somebody just wiped our car. Come on! It's hit and run, that's what it is. Those hot rods ought to be taken off the streets. Officer, look at that fender. That's gonna cost me a lot of money. Where's the other car involved? It wasn't my fault. I was pulling out of a parking spot. The other car, where is it? He didn't stop. He went right on down the street. Hit and run? Did you get the number? I certainly did. Here it is. 93R131. Car 24, car 24. Come in, please. All cars, attention all cars. Pick up California license, 93R131. Cut down Ford Roads to hit and run. Repeat, attention all cars. Sergeant, I want to report a stolen car. What kind of a car? A Ford Roadster. We were making our paper route collection on Ardmore Just Street. Just a minute. What was the license number? 93R131. All right, you say you're on Ardmore Street. Whereabouts on Ardmore? Between 20th and about Just two... Just a second. Sergeant Mack speaking. What? Where did they find it? Uh-huh, yeah. What was that license number again? Abandoned, huh? Well, don't worry about it. They're right here in front of me. That's right. Don't worry, I will. Did they find my car? They did, right where you left it. What do you mean? That's impossible. You two think you're pretty clever, don't you? You smack into a guy, run away, ditch the car, and come in here and report it stolen. You don't give us credit for much sense at all, do you? What are you talking about? You're under arrest for hit and run traffic. Oh, me? Yes, you. What's your name? Clarence Johnson. But listen, Sarge, we weren't doing any... Quiet. You'll have a chance to tell the judge whatever story you cooked up. Address. 4959 Grandview Street. Occupation? Student. Ex-student. What do you mean, ex-student? Well, I used to be a student, but now I'm a convict. I was framed. I said be quiet, wise guy. Yes, sir. What's your name? David Langham, Jr. But, Sergeant... David Langham, Jr.? Are you Judge Langham's son? That's right.
Hi, kid. All right. How did he take it? Evening, Dad. Good evening. Martha put your dinner in the oven to keep it warmer. I'll get it for you. Thanks. No, I'm not hungry. Well, Dad, wait. Why can't we talk this over just like we always do with our problem, sensibly? There's nothing to talk over. Did you know there was another accident this afternoon involving a hot rod in which three people were seriously injured? And but for a matter of inches, there might have been another just like it involving David's car on the same street this morning. But, Dad, are you sure the hot rods caused these Of accidents? course I'm sure. Your brother is in this house tonight only because, as a parent, I'm morally to blame for all of his unpardonable actions. A fine parent won't even listen to his son. When you're on the bench, you listen to both sides, don't you? Then why won't you listen to mine? When I'm on the bench, I'm in a position to deal with perjury. You lied to me once, and I have no reason to believe you wouldn't do so again. So I refuse to listen. Good night. All right, all right. You said you were responsible. Well, you're right. You're responsible for every hot rod accident that's happened in this town. I tried to tell you I wasn't in that car today, but whether I was or not, that accident was your fault, too. Go ahead, send me to jail if you want. Be a martyr. Prove to your public that you don't play favorites, that you can be just as intolerant with your own family as you can with anybody else. Drive them off the street. Don't give them a place to drive. Force them all in their crack up so you can be rid of them. Enjoy yourself. I assure you, you'll have ample opportunity to expound your theories when you appear in court. He didn't mean it all, kid. He's just upset. You were pretty rough on him, you know. But he did mean it, all of it. You believe me, don't you, Joe? Sure. Sure, I believe you. And Dad will believe you, too. We'll find some way to make him believe you. How? Even if he does, it's still a hot rod. I lied to him, and you know he's never going to forgive that. Yeah, we'll think of something. Come on out in the kitchen and get some food inside of it. Then we'll talk it over. Anyway, if you ask me, we're dead. We'll never get that strip now. Langham fixed that up for us. Yeah, how do you like that? Of all the things for a guy to do, hit and run. Well, he didn't do any real damage. Are you kidding? You don't call it damage when every cop in the city is down on us? Well, maybe it's not really Dave's fault. He said somebody swiped his car. Yeah, he was really reaching for that one. Hi, fellas. So what I did was heat up the ignition and reset the spark plug gaps. Yeah, I'll bet you'll get a lot more go with that kind of a setup. Sure will. Come on, Jack, jump in. We're going down for mall. Oh, yeah. David! Wait a minute, David! Hi. Hello, Jane. If you walk in the bus stop, so am I. Well, I'm just going down the main lot to get my bike. You can walk me partway, then. Look, Janie, it's not going to do your reputation any good to be seen with a hit-and-run hot rod driver. Oh, David, you know that doesn't make any difference to me. It doesn't? Of course not. After all, anybody can make a mistake. What do you mean by that? I mean, well, it could happen to anybody. Just because you sort of, well, lost your head. Well, that doesn't make you a criminal, does it? Oh, so that's it. Why, sure. I must say, I, I can't admire your other so-called friends very much. Anyway, it certainly doesn't make any difference to me. It was just a, well, an unfortunate accident, that's all. And I'm still your friend. Look, Janie, do me a favor, will you? What, David? Don't do me any favors. I just got here a few minutes ago. Well, what happened to you? Miscalculation. Who did it, Swifty? What difference does it make? A lot. Who was it? You wouldn't know him. Not now, anyhow. You think this is something? Boy, you ought to see that other guy. He's already gotten three offers from sideshows and one to haunt a house. Was it about me? Don't be silly. I only fight over women.
trials at three tomorrow. Yeah. That figures. They don't even fix it so we can cut any classes. I guess the theory is that after six hours of school, we'll be in no condition to put up a fight. Inasmuch as this is a second offense, the court hereby sentences you to serve 30 days at the county farm. Sentence suspended until June the 12th, on which date you will report here promptly at 9 a.m. Next case. How do you like that? Nice place to spend your vacation. Relax, will you? John C. Roberts, the state versus David Langham. Defendant, please rise and face the court. Inasmuch as the court is related to the defendant in this action, the court hereby disqualifies itself and will appoint another magistrate to sit upon this case. I now declare the court adjourned for five minutes. Your Honor, this isn't the boy that was driving the car that hit me. Are you positive, Mr. Roberts? Yes, Your Honor. I did it, Your Honor. I was driving Dave's car. That's the boy, Your Honor. Come up here, sir. Your name? Jack Blodgett. You have something to say about this, sir? Yes, Your Honor. I borrowed Dave's car for a few minutes, just as a joke. Then I ran into this fellow's car. I didn't mean to run away. I guess I just lost my head. I'm sorry, Dave. I should have spoken up sooner. That's all right, Jack. Order. Order. Mr. Langham, do you wish to press charges of automobile theft? Oh, no, De No, Your Honor, I do not. Your Honor, I don't want to cause this boy any trouble. Looks like he's in enough already. Young man, you will return here tomorrow morning, accompanied by either one or both of your parents. The court will pass sentence at that time. Now, I can tell you this now. If this is a first offense, your sentence will be the suspension of your driver's license for one year and 30 days in jail. Suspended. Order. As I look over this courtroom, it appears to me that there are a great number of owners of similar vehicles present. And I feel that I should tell you that before this accident occurred, a group of prominent citizens and I had discussed the possibilities of developing a legal timing strip for your use. Now those plans are canceled. I wish to say something else to not as a magistrate, but as a parent. If the desire to possess such hot rods can drive a son to lie to his father for the first time in his life, then such hot rods have no place in our community. David, as your father, I must order you to remove that, that vehicle from the police department and take it back to the place where it was purchased. Court adjourned. Sure handled good. Like a dream. Purred like a little blue kitten. Yeah. What's the matter with your dad anyway? Doesn't he realize that some of the best automotive engineers were hot rodders to start with? Oh, I don't know. And the Air Force. Why, some of the best pilots there are used to be hot rodders. Ask anybody. You know something? This is going to start a whole new anti-speed drive. First thing you know, they'll be putting governors on bicycles. Kids with roller skates will be thrown in the jug if they get caught skating over five miles an hour. Maybe they'll even pass a law against running. Maybe you could talk to him again tonight, huh, Dave? No, it's no use, Swifty. Dad won't change his mind. After all, the whole thing was really my fault. If I hadn't been such an eager beaver about building a hot rod so soon, that timing strip deal might have gone through. I feel worse about that than about losing the car. 
Look who's coming. Mata Hari. Hello, David. Hello, Swifty. Hello, Janie. Hi. David, I'm terribly sorry about what happened today. Thanks, Janie. I stopped by to tell you that some of the girls thought we'd have a little party at my house tonight. I'd like you to come. You too, Swifty. Party? What do you celebrate? Cut it out, Swifty. Thanks a lot, Janie, but I don't feel very much like going to a party tonight. You know. All right. We'll give it some other time when you feel a little better. Swifty, I'm... I know you think it's all my fault, and I guess you're right. Oh, it's done anyway. There's no sense of us moaning about it. No, of course not. Let's be gay. David, when do you have to return the car? Oh, I have to pick it up at the police garage tomorrow at 10. Please omit flowers. Are you going to try to sell this back to the guy you bought it from? Well, it ought to be worth a lot more now. Hey, Dave, what are we going to use for the paper route? Oh, I don't know. Maybe your dad will let you buy another old jalopy, huh? Are you kidding? Yeah. Well, stop it. Those crazy kids will never catch them. We better put this on the air. Car 37. Car 37. Come in, car 37. California license 93R131. Blue cut down roadster. Two occupants. North on Elm Street. Speeding and reckless driving. Over. California license 93R131. Blue cut down roadster. Two occupants. Car 24. Car 24. Car 24, go ahead. Pick up California license, 93R131. Last seen going north on Elm Street. Maybe heading for Sepulveda. Speeding and reckless driving. I think I know that car. It's my kid brother's. Let's head for Sepulveda.
up, both of you. But, officer, we were only you trying... You were only doing 88 the last time I looked. Joe, gee, I'm glad to see you. We were chasing a robbery just held up a liquor store on Maple Street. Dave, here. Okay, here's the license number. Put this on the air, and I guarantee you when you catch that car, the owner of the store will identify it. Put this on the air, Paul. I'm going with you, kid. Attention all units in the vicinity of Sepulveda Boulevard, Cadillac Convertible, California license, 13 York 547, heading east on Highway 6. Suspicion of robbery. Let's go. He is armed. Move over, Swissy. What do you want me for? This. And this. What'd I tell you, Joe? This is the guy. You're under arrest, mister. Get in the patrol car. Swifty, I'd like to drive this back to town. Swell! Think it's gonna work? You want an honest answer? No. Well, I sure try it anyway. Don't get overconfident. He may be outnumbered, but that don't mean a thing. Son? Yes, Dad? I was wrong, and I'm sorry. Oh, oh boy, Judge, you're solid. Uh, David, suppose we go inside there. I'm not 100% sold on these contraptions yet, but uh, perhaps we've got to talk over those ideas of yours about a track. Uh, you too, Swifty. Come on in as an advisor. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I know you don't want a long dedication speech. People your age want to get things done fast. <laughs> but for a little while, I almost forgot that. And for this, I want to ask your forgiveness. But I want to say how proud I am to be here and to take part in the groundbreaking ceremonies for this timing strip. 
Now, I realize that this official hot rod straightaway is going to make my job a lot easier. And I won't complain if it does. Hey! Ah! 